<laughs> well, hello everybody. My name is Matt Marshall. I'm the state leader for the Washington 3%, Woo! vice chairman for the second legislative district Republicans, 12-year combat veteran, veteran, jeez, I can't even say it, speak right now, husband, father, and staunch supporter of the Second Amendment. Every time I speak, there is controversy regarding the 3%. Most of this stems from misinformation. So first, I'll start with a little bit about organization. We are a 501c4 pending, nonprofit corporation based here in Washington. We work with Second Amendment issues as well as homeless and veterans outreach. But our mission is to support our communities, prepare our communities, and if the time ever came, we would defend our communities. What we are not, we are not an anti-government militia group. Actually, we are very pro-government. So as long as the government follows the restrictions set in the Constitution. Amen. We support the U.S. Constitution and we expect our government to do the same. We are not tinfoil hat conspiracy nuts. We are an inclusive group and we welcome all races, nationalities, religions, and lifestyle preferences. If you are a Constitution supporting American patriot, we welcome you. Some believe that we're a militia. Who here knows what the definition of the militia is? That's right. U.S. Title X Code states the militia is every able-bodied man of 17 and under 45 years of age, not a member of the National Guard or the Naval Militia. Here in Washington, RCW 3804.030 states, the militia of the state of Washington shall consist of all able-bodied citizens of the United States and all other able-bodied persons who have declared their intent to become citizens. Yeah. As long as they reside here. The Washington State Constitution, Article 10 states, all able-bodied male citizens 18 to 45 years of age. So yes, some of my members, some of the members of Washington 3% are the militia, but many of you are as well. Yes. Yeah. Amen. My favorite definition comes from a patriot political prisoner that some of you may have heard of, Schaefer Cox. Yep. The militia is every human with a rifle and a conscience. Amen. Sorry, the wind's getting at me. So, why are we here? Freedom! We're here for freedom. We're also here because we're angry. The people are angry that we have politicians pushing partisan laws down our throats that negatively, negatively affects our ability to defend ourselves. We will not comply! We're angry that we're being taxed every time we turn around. Angry that our taxes are be de being decided by and used to fund special interest. We're angry that our taxes are being used by our governor to jet set around the country with an expensive protective detail while he campaigns for, campaigns for president. I agree with that. <laughs> the average citizen, right or left leaning to political ideals, has one thing that we can all agree on right now. We are all disenfranchised. We do not feel like our voices are being heard. Our government at all levels is out of control, and we need to regain that control. Our government is designed to be of the people and for the people. What it has become is of the elite and for the special interest. Our rights are being trampled, conservative speech is being attacked and stifled at universities all around our country. Our Second Amendment is infringed upon by gun grabbers who have no knowledge about firearms, pushing an agenda based purely on emotion and without any fact or evidence while doing nothing to disarm the criminals. Our Fourth Amendment is completely gone, thanks to cell phones and the apps that track our every move well, that information is then turned and sold to the government. And I'm not even getting into land rights. The Constitution is not a document that grants us our Bill of Rights. Our rights are inherent birthrights. The Constitution protects us from the government taking our birthrights. 
That is correct. The Constitution is supposed to restrict the government. Yet, over the last 240 years, we have become complacent. Now we're in a country where everybody believes that we have a democracy. Well, we have always had a constitutional republic. The mob is actually correct when they chant, this is what democracy looks like. It looks like mob rule, because that's what it is. We have become complacent, and now the people have become willing, the sheep are willing to surrender their rights. Thomas Jefferson was correct when he said the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Our, our attorney general in this state is leading the charge to force the surrender of unalienable rights. Treason! He seems to be incapable of comprehending the definition of infringed or impaired. He actively lobbies to destroy the integrity of our state constitution. Treason! Our federal constitution. <laughs> Speaker's down, but it's not me. <laughs> We will not be quiet about this. Bob Ferguson has no business holding his office. Amen. He is facing multiple civil and criminal complaints as well as many ethic, ethics violations. Yep. We need him out of office and let me be clear. All efforts to remove Bob Ferguson will be done. Amen. And we will use the laws and powers endowed upon us by our forefathers. We will use the laws the way they were intended, for the people and by the people. Because Bob Ferguson is aware of the power inherent in all of us, and that I'm out here standing up for our rights, Bob Ferguson actually referred me to the FBI. It was all over a Twitter post calling for his removal from office. Bob Ferguson, I believe it's time we talk. You have many town hall meetings that we will, the 3% will, be attending. Or better yet, I challenge you, Bob Ferguson, to a public debate. I want to debate you regarding the Constitution of the United States as well as the Washington State Constitution. We both took oaths to uphold the United States Constitution. So I would hope that we both understand it. Know that patriots all over the state are tired of you weaponizing your office, using the Washington State Patrol as a private army to enforce unconstitutional laws. We are not afraid of you, neither are the sheriffs across the state. Anyone who speaks out against the machine right now is stifled. Republicans who spoke today were urged to not speak by a group of 29 leftist organizations who have spewed their animosity towards the 3% and Patriot Prayer. They do this on purpose. CARE has slanderously spread misinformation about our organization and about all of you who came out here to support your rights. They do this to scare freedom-loving Americans out of attending. Look what they just did to Matt Shea. They want to burn him for sticking to conservative values and nothing else. They take a few comments out of text and they run with it. No fact checking, they stump straight to, straight to scare tactics and label lynching. They call, for vi call us the violent extremists and I want to know when was upholding the constitution considered extreme? <laughs> label lynching is causing a divide, not our presence at this rally. We the people have been divided by partisan politics and there's one way forward. We must use the tools given by our forefathers. We must hold our government accountable. We must exercise our rights. Our rights are like a muscle. If we do not exercise our rights, they will waste away until they are non-existent. When the people, or when the people fear the government, we have tyranny. When the government fears the people, we have liberty. To quote Patrick Henry, and in conclusion, is life so dear, peace so sweet, as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? No. Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but for me, give me liberty or give me death. Along the bay, we are everywhere. We are the 3%.